Welcome to the Miami Dade College Journals and Speaker Series. I'm your host, Manolo Barco. Joining us today is Luis Hernandez of WLRN. Luis, welcome to the show. Hey, Manolo, thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about your career. Um, obviously, we have a lot of young students, or we have students here that are trying to figure out how to get into the, to the, their career path. Talk to us a little bit about how you got started and what was important to you in those days. It's really interesting when I think about my story because I got into radio by accident. I mean, it, it was literally an accident. I was, when I was in school, I was studying art and history. And I thought, if I'm not gonna make it as an artist, maybe I could be a professor. And uh, they opened up a radio station uh, on the campus my sophomore year, and then one of my really good friends came up to me and said, let's go be DJs, just for fun on the weekends. I said, yeah, let's go, why not? And um, we went to the audition. I went up, got in front of a microphone, read a card. That was it. I thought, okay, whatever. The, the program director came up to me later and he asked me, have you ever done this before? I said, no. He's like, you want a job? Sure. Here I am now, almost 30 years later, I'm still doing this. It was, it was completely by accident. I never, ever imagined I'd ever get into, into broadcasting. So it was a total accident. But I mean, you know, to answer like what's important to me, what I loved most about it, and I think why I stuck with it, is there was an intimacy to working in radio in that you're just sitting in this room in front of a microphone and just talking to an audience. You know they're there. You don't see them, you don't interact with them, but you know they're there. And you're just talking to them. It's just your voice connecting with them. And it's always been something really special for me. Um, why I loved radio more than television, because I did a little TV, more than print, because I did some of that. It was always the intimacy of radio. It's just, I, it, to me, it's just, it's my love. It's my absolute passion. So talk to us a little bit about your instrument, your voice. Uh, how do you preserve that? I'm sure you, like anybody else, like to go and have fun. I'm sure you go to concerts, you go to sporting events, and I'm sure you have to kind of rein back a little bit, right? Some of the yeah. fandom has to calm down. I No, I do. I actually don't go to as many concerts or games as I used to, or if I do, I'm not the guy who's screaming. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm just enjoying it. Um, you have to. I mean, at least, I, look, I've known people who abuse their voices and somehow they, they kept going and lucky them, but um, I definitely can't. Uh, so for me, I'm careful not to, I'm not doing a lot of screaming. I'm really not. I try not to, by the end of the day, I, I go home and it's funny because like, you know, I've had my family say, you don't talk much. I spent the whole day talking. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk anymore. I'm done. Um, I try when I'm not talking, when I'm at home, relaxing, I'm not using my voice as much. And, and really, for me, if anything, it's just um, the trick that I learned a long time ago was from the famous soccer announcer, Andres Cantor. You know, every night, some hot water with honey and lemon just to protect my voice. So you have that secret weapon now. You've given everybody your secret weapon. That's, that, that's <laughs> a secret weapon. The other thing, too, is this. You can't drink coffee or anything with chocolate before you go on air. It, it really does. It, it's not good for your throat. Talk to me a little bit about, um, about your biggest challenge. What are some of the biggest challenges that you faced in your career? And how have you, you know, how you overcame them? Wow, biggest challenges. Okay. I think more than anything, the biggest challenges I could think of in my career always had to do with patience. Um, I wasn't always the most patient person. Uh, I'm very ambitious and I just, I knew what I wanted to do, but a lot of times, and now, now I find myself at this stage of life trying to tell young people, be patient. You gotta be patient. Things don't happen overnight. You don't build a career in a couple of years. It's gonna take time. Um, I always think about those moments in my life. Probably one of them, for example, was when I was in Las Vegas. That was the job before I was here. So it wasn't even that long ago. Um, I remember I, I wanted to, to host. I was the, an anchor, but I wanted to host. And, you know, you're trying to prove yourself that you could do it, and you don't get that chance. And I got to the point where I said, fine, I'm going to go somewhere else. But then you're looking, 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 doing all these interviews, nothing happens, and you start feeling like maybe I'm not going to make it. Maybe, I mean, because years passed, and I'm waiting, 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 and you keep getting rejected. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm just not, I'm just not good enough. But I, I tell people, no, hang in there, hang in there, you just... I get this job, and I was, still wasn't even hosting, but I, I wanted to take this job because I wanted to come back home to South Florida. 
And even when I was here, I was waiting and all of a sudden, somebody retires. The opening comes up. We're going to give you a show. You're going to host. It took a while, but I was like, okay. Patience was always my toughest challenge because it's not something that's natural for me. So talk a little bit about transition. So you now have been a news anchor and now you're hosting your own show. Uh, talk to me about the different skill sets and different, um, what, what's different about what you're doing today in those two capacities? Anchoring is something, first of all, it's something that you do in a very short period of time. You anchor for three, four, five minutes at a time. So, you know, you're going to be on for a short period of time. You've got to be very focused. It's not to say you should always be focused, but, you know, you have a script, you have the stories in front of you, everything's laid out for you, and everything is about time. I've got to fill five minutes, I've got to be out in five minutes. Um, and then everything is about making sure that I am sticking to that script and I, I can't deviate from it. I've got to, you know, everything's got to be the exact structure. wording structure it, that's right there in front of you. Hosting is a little bit more, it's more ad lib. It's, I mean, there's a script, but for the most part, we've got to fill 45, 50 minutes and it's a conversation. It, all it is, is is more than anything. It's like us right now. It can, be, it can be dangerous too, though. I imagine that, <laughs> that, that leads you down that path of like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Or it, Yes, no, no, you're right. You have to be careful when you're anchoring. It's easier in that if you're just reading what's in front of you, you can't deviate from it. You're not going to say anything that you would regret later. When you're hosting and you really can just go off script and start doing whatever you right. want, yeah, every now and then you might, it's not to say I'm never going to say anything that's going to get me in trouble, but I could say things that are inaccurate. I could say something that um, is factually wrong, and then I'm going to have a producer in my ear right away say, nope, that's wrong, <laughs> correct yourself right now. And so then I have to, right there in that moment, I have to correct myself. Well, we're going to take a momentary break, and we'll come back with Luis Fernandez of WLRN. MDC. Be analytical. Be imaginative. Be a rising star. Be bold. Be connected. Be the solution. Be ready. What's your story? Be the best. Be you. Be MDC. Welcome back to the Miami Dade College Journalism and Speaker Series. We have Mr. Luis Fernandez here from WLRN. Luis, before the break, we were talking a little bit about your career, obviously. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about variety you've had? You've done sports, you've done news, you've done radio, you've done TV, newspaper. Talk to us about the importance of having variety in your career. The variety, a lot of the variety, by the way, was not by choice. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I started as a sports guy and I thought that would be my life. And to be honest with you, I got a little tired of it and I wanted something else, I wanted a challenge. And when a news job came up, I said, let me try it. Because maybe I'll like it, I don't know. Um, if anything, I, I do tell young people like, be flexible, you don't know what you're gonna like. If you haven't tried it, you cannot judge it. So uh, a, a news job came up and I took it, and I said, you know what, this is actually a lot more fun. But yeah, it, it's, I mean, throughout my career, sometimes it was by choice and sometimes not by choice where I just got the opportunity to go do something I usually wouldn't do. And all of those experiences, I mean, they were really powerful. I think about one, for example, when I switched from sports to news, I took a job at a radio station in Denver. And this is very new for me. I knew how to report and go out in the field and do all that, but I had never covered things like, uh, that year I was there, there was a massive wildfire. And they were like, you're going out there and you're gonna to talk mm -hmm. to some people uh, who've lost their homes, you're gonna to talk to some fire officials, you know, be careful. And I was like, I never had to do anything like that. I never had to worry about those things. And I remember I was, I felt a little bit unprepared because I remember at one point I did find some people who were standing on a cliff 
overlooking this valley, you could see the fire. Mm-hmm. And I was just talking to different people. And I remember talking to this one gentleman who was standing there and he didn't really say much. And I was frustrated because being in radio, I was like, well, I need some comments. And then it wasn't until afterward I realized he was holding a piece of paper. And he said, this is the piece of paper that the Red Cross was giving everybody. And it had two columns. All of the, one column was a bunch of numbers. The other column was a bunch of numbers. These are the houses that are saved. These are the ones that are lost. Oh, wow. And his was on the list that was lost. It didn't hit me until afterward. Well, the man was in shock. Yeah. It was a real, it was a wake up call for me. It was, I mean, I did not know how to handle that at the time, but experiences like that made me realize, okay, there's a certain way you have to approach people with a compassion. Um, you still have to do your job, but you could, you know, you have to remember that we're all human beings. And especially when they're in a situation like that, you know, you have to approach them the right way. Sometimes you don't approach them. You have to leave them alone. So th- it, those kind of experiences were, yeah, I mean, it, you can never learn that in school. Never. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about your schooling. So you grew up in South Florida. You're a South Florida kid. You grew yep. up in Palm Beach County, right? Yep. Um, how important is it to be reporting in your, your community now? And, and how important is it for you to understand your community and be able to report on that? You know, that's always the interesting part is like so many young people want to leave. They want to get away from home. And I was one of them. I, I, I said, you know what? I got to get out of here. My life, my career took me to a lot of different places. But when this job came up, my first reaction was, I don't know if I'm ready to come back to South Florida. Um, but then I thought about it and I realized there's no better place for me to go because this is where I grew up. I know so much of the area. I know how it's changed over the years. I know people here. When you know the place, you think about this. If a story breaks and they say, oh, it's over here at, you know, in this neighborhood, but they give you the nickname of the neighborhood, you don't have to go look it up on Google. You don't have to Google map it. You don't have to ask people, where am I going? Where's the best place to go? You're like, I know that place. Mm-hmm. And you just know exactly where to go, who to talk to. You can make a phone call. Hey, something happened over here. Um, do you have that number for that you know, person? Are they still there? When you know the area, you have that intimacy with it. You know how to find stories. Most people, that new reporter who doesn't know, they're still trying to figure their way around. You know all these people who can get you a story nobody else is going to get. So with that said, though, you've, you've moved around a, a good amount, right? Yeah. So, you know, sources are very important. And how is it tough? How tough is it being in a new place, a new location, Gainesville, Las oh. Vegas, wherever, and you have to make new sources. Yeah. You have to find out where, even something as simple as this is where I want to get my clothes dry clean, or <laughs> this is where, where I want to go get my hair cut. Yes. How, t- how tough, how, how important is that? I mean, how tough is that when, when you're moving around a, a lot? Because that's going to happen a lot in this career. When you, yeah, no, when you think about it, you're, you, just think about that part of it. That's the, the, the tough part. Finding the doctor, the dentist, the eye doctor, <laughs> the person who's gonna cut your hair, all of the, you know, where's the supermarket that I wanna shop at? Now you have to find all of this stuff just for your daily life, your regular life. But then you're talking about trying to build a whole new list of contacts, mm. you know? And I mean, if you have a beat, you cover the crime beat, you cover the healthcare beat, then fine. You know where to start looking, but then you gotta go meet those people. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Luis Hernandez. I'm covering this beat. We're gonna be talking a lot. Mm then you know then you got to start working with those people and that takes it's like building any relationship it takes time it takes time to build that relationship compared to when you've been living in a place for a while you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and it's easy but it, t- it could take months it could take at least a couple of years before you feel really comfortable in a place and you feel like at least you can make your way around certain parts of the neighborhood so, but what would you say to a, to a student who would say, well, I, that's exactly why I don't want to move. I don't want to move. I want to stay in my place that I know everything. I mean, I would tell them if you could stay home, you know, that would be ideal. But it always depends because some people, and, and this is the funny part, is that I, I was always a little bit shy. This is why radio always worked best for me because I could be in a studio and you know, people would come to me to do the interviews at the studio. Um, some people are very outgoing. They can show up, they could go anywhere. And some of these reporters, I mean, these are the reporters with the major networks uh, or the big newspapers. They're the ones who you always hear that term, they get parachuted in. Those are the ones 
you'll send out because they can go to a strange place and in no time they feel comfortable or at least they can find their way around. If you're that type of person, you're gonna be fine. But not everybody could do that. Um, a lot of people end up coming home anyway. That's, so, that's what I tell young people. You're probably gonna end up going home anyway. I did. And you'll be happy for it. And, and I guess that's a good, it's a comforting thing to see because most people say you, you seem pretty confident, you seem pretty comfortable. Uh, and if Luis Hernandez was, was maybe not as comfortable at some point in their life and their career, you know, yeah. I, can, I can build off of that. And, and there's, there's hope for me, I guess. There's always, uh, listen, when, when you're first starting, you're always lacking that confidence because you're young and you're building yourself up. And it just, it takes time. And, you know, it's easy for me to say because I've been doing this 25 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hindsight is I can look back and I understand that journey that I took. Um, but I just tell people it just, over time you start to get comfortable in yourself. You get comfortable in your own shoes and then you don't even think about it. Perfect, well, we're gonna take another break and we'll return with Luis Hernandez of WLRN. at MDC. Be analytical. Be imaginative. Be a rising star. Be bold. Be connected. Be the solution. Be ready. What's your story? Be the best. Be you. Be MDC. Welcome back to the Miami Dade College Journals and Speaker Series. We're here with Luis Hernandez. Luis, thank you for being here again. Thank you. Um, let's talk a little about your newest venture, Sundial. Um, talk to us a little bit about this new challenge you have. This is, I love this story because of how it happened. Um, you know, the show that was on before us, Topical Currents, that was a show that was on for many, many years. So it had a very devout base of listeners that, you know, had been with them for a long time. And the host, Joe Cooper, decides, I'm ready to retire, I'm done. So the station had to decide, what are we gonna do? And I said, instead of just giving that hour back to the network, let's keep a local show. And they, they knew of my desire to have a show. And they said, all right, Lewis, here's your chance. Now the thing about it is, is that we had to turn this around in a couple of months. And anybody who's been in the business knows, television or radio, you don't build a show in a couple of months. It takes months, it could take a year, but we had two months. And we actually lost two weeks because of Hurricane Irma. So we had basically six weeks to build a radio show. And we were a week and a half before the show started, we didn't even have a name yet. So we were still in that process trying to put it together. And it was a lot of fun, as crazy and, and stressful as it was, it was a lot of fun to do that. But the show is really special because it's everything that I wanted a show to be. A local show that sounds like a national show, but the focus is completely about everything South Florida. It's about life here in South Florida. And you know, people who listen to it, I've always, I always imagined that the listener would want to listen to this program because it, it has a South Florida sound. The attitude, the mentality of the show is about South Florida. And you know, that if you really wanted to know what life is like here in this, in this region, this, is, a show to go this to. is the show you would go to because this, is, this would tell you everything you need to know. So it's interesting because you were talking a little bit about patience in the beginning, and I guess it, everything that you were looking for came to fruition now, and, and all the things you did before prepared you for it. You know, so when you talk to young people and you talk about where you are now, uh, and obviously I'm sure you have other uh, aspirations as well, but talk, talk to them a little bit about how important it is, again, talking about this patience and being able oh, yeah. to build. I, t I tell students all the time, it's like building a house. Every little thing you do, it's another brick, another brick, another brick. That's, that's a perfect analogy. I, I think it takes time to build a house. By the way, using that analogy, it takes a long time to build a house. You could burn it down really fast. So remember your reputation. Remember how you treat people is really important. But yeah, no, no, it, it, that's, that's a good point is that I can look back on all of the things that I've done in my career. 
working in radio, most of my career is radio, a little bit of television, a little bit of print. I took acting classes at one point, which was very helpful. Um, I think about all those experiences and it led me to this point now. Every now and then I get people who tell me, you know, when they sit in the studio, they get nervous. And then once we start, I, I, I'm good at getting people to be comfortable and just be themselves. And then when it's over, they ask me, you make it look so easy. And I say, that's not natural, that's not normal. That's 25 years of doing all this stuff. That's why it seems so easy for me now. So is it tough to turn that off when you go home? You're sitting, you know, friends and family. Uh, is it tough to turn it off? Because, you know, you have the voice, you have the, you, you're, you're inquisitive, you have these questions. Yeah. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that. Maybe it's probably caused some problems at home or? Well, no, I can turn it off for the most part. I, you know, when I go home, I, I, like I said before, I try not to talk that much because I want to relax. <laughs> um, but I, I can shut it off and just step away from it. But it's not to say, I've always been just an inquisitive person anyway, but yes. when I start getting into conversations with people, I just start asking so many questions. And it's just because it's just no normal for me. People and, don't understand about details, right? Yeah, and some <laughs> people are just like, the questions you're asking, why are you asking that? Like, I, I wanna know what you're doing and how you do that. So that, that's when I, I don't shut it off because it's just normal for me. I just, I wanna ask questions. Talk, talk, to, talk to us a little bit about this novel. I understand you're working on a novel. Oh, what gosh. can you share with us? That has been a dream like since forever. I mean, going back to school, I've always wanted to, but it was always something that I just did on the side, obviously. It's not, this is my job is most of my life, most of my day. So when I have a little extra time, but um, it's just always been a dream. And now I'm trying to, you know, instead of talking about it, instead of dreaming about it, I'm really trying to make it happen. Um, the book that I'm working on right now I don't have a title to it or anything, but it's actually what fits under this new category, climate fiction. And you know, for the last few years here, especially here in, in South Florida, the bigger some of the biggest stories we cover are about climate science, you know, climate change, sea level rise. So for the last four or five years, that's been a big part of my life. And I just one day said, you know what? We talk about what Miami could look like in 50, 60, 70 years. And then I just said, you know what? Let's go 70 years in the future. I'm gonna write a book about that. It's fiction, but I envision a Miami that's gonna look very different than what we think about today. And it's been a lot of fun writing that. It really has, because it's totally fiction based on science. It is tough to kind of get away as well. When you start writing and you start coming up with these ideas, you kind of get stuck. It's kind of like when you're reading a really good book. Yeah. You feel, you, you put the book down and you go to the grocery store and you feel like, oh, I'm in the story. Yeah. You realize, no, wait a minute, I put the book down already. Uh, is it tough sometimes to break away from that when you're, when you're in the writing mode? Um, yes and no, but you know what I've learned, if anything, I don't think that I could be a writer if I had all day to write. I, I don't think I can do it. I'm one of those people because of the fact that I've been in this business so long, I'm used to working on deadline. And when there's tighter deadlines and there's more pressure on me, I, I think I perform better. So for me, the fact that I only have maybe half an hour, 40 minutes a night that I could spend writing, I think it's ideal for me because that pressure forces me to sit down, focus, and work. And then that's all I'm doing for that time. And so I think if I had all day to write, I would not get much done. <laughs> I really don't, I, I like the pressure. Fair enough. Um, talk to us, I guess maybe the last question, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the industry, your industry. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things that are, are exciting, um, that are coming up in the horizon, and things that maybe are changing, evolving in, in your industry? The business is changing, journalism is changing overall, and you've had the chance to talk to a lot of journalists from print to television and radio, and they've all told you the same. Um, I'm not one who looks at the business and says, we're in trouble. Um, I know things are changing a lot, but I'm not like I'm not Chicken Little. I, the sky's not falling. Journalism is strong, and journalism is necessary. What's changing is the tools that we use to to disseminate that journalism. Think of it this way: a little over 100 years ago, if you owned a horse and carriage business, the Model T Ford's coming off the assembly line, you're in trouble. If you don't adapt, you're out of business. So the internet has changed a lot of the business. Radio is changing because of podcasting. So we have to adapt to those changes or we're in trouble. But to me, I just think, you know, it's an exciting time because we're still gonna have to tell stories. We still have to tell the news. We just have another way of doing it. 
Lewis, thank you for being on the show. Great to have you today. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining us. And we'll be back soon with the next episode of the NDC Journals and Speaker Series. Until then, stay safe. Stay safe.